this let's pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Since my wife and I came to the United States, it is very common that we go to Mexican restaurants there in all the towns or cities that we go to. However, the reality is that although many restaurants claim to cook authentic Mexican food, many are not. For example, one of the best known in the United States is the famous chain Taco Bell. But that is not an authentic Mexican food restaurant since it is a Tex-Mex. I remember about 20 years ago, Taco Bell decided to open a restaurant in Mexico City. But what was expected was fulfilled. In less than a month, Taco Bell had closed its restaurant in that city due to a lack of customers. I consider that basically two characteristics stand out to recognize a good traditional Mexican food, but it also applies to other uh, cuisines. First, the authenticity of the recipes, many of which have existed for centuries and are transmitted from generation to generation with slight variations, but they remain basically the same. Second, using good quality and fresh ingredients. Traditional Mexican food has a rule. You will not cook it using cans, nor frozen food, nor previously pre-cooked ingredients with just a few exceptions. That makes food usually a little more expensive than others. Still, in return, the food does not taste like chemical preservations. This feature is present in many of the best cuisines in the world, including the American kitchen. Although we cannot expect to get the best food if we do not use the best ingredients. Some restaurants notice the menu or elsewhere letting customers know that they have used only the best and fresh ingredients. In the same way, we cannot expect good results in our lives without giving the best of ourselves. For example, you have probably watched the Tokyo Olympics on television. An athlete cannot wait to break records without sufficient training, adequate nutrition, the proper strategy, and enough mental strength to overcome adversities. No, you can be successful in business and work without taking the right decisions and actions. No, can we expect adequate growth in the Christian life without failing God and doing our will instead. Moreover, our Bible reading today from the letter of two, sorry, the letter to Ephesians shares some of these core ingredients. It's an all God's recipe for how we can enjoy our new life in God. So the first ingredient is speak the truth. Before in Ephesians 4, 15, Apostle Paul says, but speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ. It is essential not just to speak the truth, it's telling the truth in love. Before those words, St. Paul writes about unity in the body of Christ. He wrote, I beg you to live in a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. He defines this life as one in which we are humble, 
gentle, passion, bearing with one another in love, and making efforts toward unity in the bond of peace. Rather than be spiritually immature and easily deceived, we are to communicate with love and the truth to one another to grow together in maturity. It is not about telling the truth, being rude, but telling the truth with love. Talking regarding speaking the truth, I love the following quote by the writer Mark Twain. If you tell the truth, you don't have to remember anything. I repeat, it's a quote from Mark Twain. If you tell the truth, you don't have to remember anything. For those of us who have a terrible capacity to remember, telling lies is not an option. Afterward, we begin to fall into contradictions. So better, let's not tell lies. It's preferable always to tell the truth. So the first ingredient is the truth. And the next one is interesting. It reads, be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. And do not make room for the devil. Have you found yourself angry about anything in the last few days? Whenever the anger comes from something simple or something, or something complicated, the Holy Scripture tells us to do not let the sun go down on our anger. God is not chiding us for feeling that anger but instead warning us that it's essential to find ways to deal with it. However then, perhaps, most importantly, let it go. Let it go. Very little good can come from stewing about something over and over and over. Also, yet, it's incredible how often we do this. We can choose to forgive. We can decide to move on. We can decide to live in harmony with one another as best we can. May God help each of us to find a way to do this in all our relationships. Be careful with anger because anger moves people. It can move them to do good, but it can also move them to do evil most of the time. I have met people who try to avoid responsibility for their actions. Many of these people have hurt others. They have offended others. They have damaged the reputation of others. And their excuse was, I was furious. But that is by no means an excuse for us as Christians. Feeling angry does not exonerate us from our responsibilities. I think these are some reasons why the Apostle Paul Road, do not let the sun go down on your anger and do not make room from the devil. So, for this recipe for being the family of God, we've got the truth. We've added in some anger control. And we know that we have a whole lot of other ingredients to go. We need a good dose of generosity, grace, edifying words, kind, hardness, and forgiveness. The Apostle Paul is 
inspired by the Holy Spirit, give us an excellent advice. Let no evil talk come out of your mouth, but only what is useful for building up. I repeat, in view of my words, in the words from Apostle Paul, let no evil talk come out of your mouth, but only what is useful for building up. Do you want to hear some other excellent advice? Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrongly and slander together with all malice. Mm. However, we must be aware that the best recipes, the best ingredients can be ruined if we add the wrong elements. When we add rotten eggs when baking a cake, this is ruined and for all the others have been excellent ingredients. And we have used the grandmother's recipe. We need to leave out things like bitterness and wrath and rancor and slander and malice. And finally, add the two last ingredients. They are part of the secret recipe. Be imitators of God and add life in love. I repeat, be imitators of God and add life in love. But not just any kind of thing called love. Ephesians says, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. So here comes an important secret. Never Substitute the best ingredients for imitations or low quality elements. I love real fresh orange juice. But it is easy, but it is not easy to get it. Many restaurants claim to have it, but in reality it is not. So when I enter a restaurant, I ask the waiter, do you have fresh orange juice? And usually the waiter answers, of course. So once again, I ask him or her, do you have orange juice in this restaurant? And do you squeeze them right here? And don't add something else to that juice? Then usually the waiters tell me, we don't have it. That is why I like to go, for example, to the Viroqua family restaurant, because they, there they have a machine that makes orange juice and it is in front of everyone. There is nothing like original and fresh products. The problem is that fake or lower quality products Try to supplant the originals, even using the same words and names. In fact, there are many fakes, not only in food, but in a wide variety of products, services. It is also even intended to imitate human feelings and emotions. The same happens in the spiritual world. World, the opponent of God will always try to imitate Him, to give us a cheaper fake products that we can obtain without any commitment to God. True love cannot be replaced by a trinket or a forgery of love. A how true cannot substitute the truth. Mundane pleasure cannot replace the joy of God. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, I invite you to use only the best ingredients.
ingredients. I invite you not to substitute ingredients in God's recipe. I invite you and me to try with the help of the Holy Spirit to be Christians that with all our hearts to seek to walk in the path that God has traced. And we do not cut corners on it. God will bless you throughout your life and you will not regret it. So remember, one, follow God's recipe, and two, use the best ingredients. Don't substitute them. Don't omit them. And you will have a tremendous spiritual feast at the end. It is not that God saved us by good works. It is that God is teaching us to be obedient to Him. The Lord wants to bless you. And the Lord is going to bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, let's pray. Lord God, we thank you because you have given us the best of yourself. You gave us your Son, Jesus Christ. You also ask us to give our best. Moreover, above all, you ask us to present to you, to our neighbor and the stranger, authentic love. No imitations, no substitutes, no cheap replacements. Please help us use the best ingredients. Would you please help us to be imitators of you? We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen.